Hello world, Noah here, and welcome back to Python one-liner tips and tricks. In this video, we're going to be talking about the key parameter. The key parameter is present in a few built-in functions in Python. Uh, for example, it's present in the sorted function, the min function, and the max function. And in order to sort of explain why the key parameter is necessary or why it's useful, I think it's best done through example. So before I explain what exactly it is, let's take a look at today's problem. So the problem says, implement a function that returns a case insensitive sorted copy of a list of strings. So you're given a list of strings, you want to sort them, um, but you want to be case insensitive. So it doesn't matter if you have a capital letter or a lowercase letter, it should still sort as appropriate. And the reason why this needs to be specified is because, for example, if you took uh, you know, some list and sorted it, you would actually get this right here. So uppercase A, lowercase a, uppercase B, or sorry, uppercase A, uppercase B, lowercase a, lowercase b, that string would actually be considered um, as sorted. Now to us, it's not considered sorted, but to a computer it is. And the reason um, you know, goes down to how these uh, letters, how these characters are represented in the computer. And so I mentioned in the strings lecture of CS University um, that Python represents um, you know, characters in Unicode. Uh, you know, if you're dealing with just letters, you can also look at ASCII, which is a lot simpler. But essentially, all of the uppercase letters appear before uh, all of the lowercase letters. And so when you go and sort these, um, you know, an uppercase B has a lower or a smaller Unicode code point than a lowercase a. And so capital B would come before lowercase a. And so while this is correct to a computer, it's not correct to us because we usually sort words in dictionary order, also called lexicographical order. And so uh, this would not be considered correct to us. And we want to write a sorting function that sorts uh, in the way that we would sort. So how can you deal with this? Well, one way you might think is, why don't I convert all of the strings in the list to be lowercase? Um, and then that would work, right? Because lowercase b would obviously come after lowercase a. But the problem is that now you've changed the elements of this list. So before it had you know, some uppercase letters and some lowercase letters, and now they're all lowercase. And so this is not desired behavior. We want to sort the list that we're given. We don't want to modify the values of that list. And then you could try and you know, implement some complicated strategy of saving you know, the list as it was before, converting stuff to lowercase, sorting it, and then trying to restore some of the elements back to their you know, uppercase versions. Um, but that would be incredibly complicated. It would probably uh, not do so well when you're dealing with duplicate values and, and whatever. So there's no, there's no real point in trying to, to go that way because, as you can probably guess, there's a nice way of doing this in Python. So the solution that I have here on the left-hand side is, is um, it's a bubble sort, which is a simple sorting algorithm. Um, but you could use any sorting algorithm here. You could write you know, insertion sort, you could write uh, merge sort, quick sort, whatever you want. The point isn't the sorting algorithm, though. The point, um, which I'll show you in a second, there's just a little bit of code in there that's actually important. So don't worry too much about the, the code on the left. It's just a bubble sort. I just wanted to write something that would work. But there is a, a key part that will that will um, sort of motivate what we're talking about today. And so basically, the way that this works is, you know, we start by copying, um, you know, we copy here the original input. So we're not modifying the the given input. We copy it over, and we don't do any conversion into lowercase because, like we said, that would be a problem. But the key line is actually right here. I'm gonna try and box that. This is the key line right here. Um, and so basically what happens is we have this, this uh, function right here called case fold. It basically works like the, the lower function for Python strings. It's a little bit different. I think it's a little bit more aggressive than the lower function. It doesn't really make a difference. The point though is that the case fold function um, you know, will put two strings that have different uh, you know, capitalizations into the same string. So the word hello in all uppercase and the word hello in all lowercase if you call case fold on both of those strings, they will be equivalent to each other. The results will be equivalent to each other. And so that's really the key right here. This is where we're doing the comparison. So this right here is the uh, comparison. And that's really how uh, you know, all of these comparison-based sorting algorithms work. You, know, you go through 
all of your elements. And the essential question you ask is here are two elements, um, which one belongs before the other one? And so that's the comparison step. And that's exactly what's happening right there. But notice that when we do the comparison, we're comparing the case fold values, not the original ones. We're not just comparing ands at index i plus 1 and ands at index i. We're comparing the case folded versions, which is the key. Because you know then this does the, comparative, it does the comparison in a case insensitive manner, which is what we want. But then here, this is where we actually do the swap. So we, we swap the two values if they're supposed to be swapped, right? And when we swap the values, we're not swapping the case fold values. We're swapping the original values. So we're swapping ands at index i plus 1 and ands at index i, which are the original values and not the case folded values. And so the point is that the comparison is done in a case insensitive fashion. Um, but the swapping is done on the original values. And so in this way, we do the comparisons that we want to do without modifying the original list. And so that's the basic idea of you know, what we're trying to accomplish here. I'm just going to rewrite the word comparison up here so it doesn't get in the way of the code that we're going to write. So comparison like that. Um, so that's the idea. We want to we want to uh, compare in a case insensitive way, but we want to maintain the original values. And so, of course, we're trying to do something that involves sorting. And so, um, you know, we're probably going to want to use the sorted function that's that's uh, that's built in. But of course, by default, the sorted function will will act in, um, you know, in the standard way where it would put an uppercase B before lowercase a. And so what we can actually do is we can we can change you know, how the, the comparison is done by the sorted function by specifying a special parameter, which is the key parameter, and, you know, therefore the name of, of this video. And so here's what it looks like. Basically, we're going to just return sorted STRs, but then we need to specify, um, you know, how we want these things to be compared. And the way we do it is we have this positional argument, this keyword argument called key, and so key is going to be equal to, it's going to be a lambda function. So I'm going to say lambda s, s dot case fold. And then we just need a closing parenthesis for the sorted call. So just like that. And so what exactly uh, is happening here is the question. Well, what's happening is it's going to, it's going to sort you know, all of these, these strings. Right. And by default, when it compares two strings, you know, let's say it compares strings A and B, it's just going to compare them directly. And that's the behavior that we don't want. But when we specify a key function, instead of comparing A and B directly, uh, the sorted function is going to compare the key of A to the key of B. So it's going to call this key function on the two strings that are being compared. And then it's going to compare the results of that function call instead of the values themselves. And so, you know, our key function right here is lambda s s dot case fold. So it takes as input a string and it returns the case folded version of that string. And so this is exactly what we want, right? Instead of comparing a and b, we're actually comparing a dot case fold to b dot case fold, right? And that is exactly what is happening over, you know, over here on the left. We're comparing the case folded values, but we're not changing any of the elements of this list. So the key function is only used in the comparison. Um, and so, you know, after it does the comparison with the results of the key function, it does not, you know, use those values when it's doing the sorting. It just uses them for the comparison. And so this will give us the result that we want. It will sort the original values with the capitalization intact. But when it does the sorting, specifically when it does the comparing, the comparisons, it will do that in a case insensitive fashion. Um, and this also works for the min and max functions. So if you're trying to find the minimum value or the maximum value, you can also specify a key function to say, you know, you know, how do you compare two values? Because you can think if you want to find the minimum value, you go through each element and look for the minimum. But when you're determining the minimum, you can specify a function to say, you know, it takes as input a value and it will tell you, you know, basically how small that value is. And, you know, the same thing works for max. And so you can do the exact same idea for all three of those functions. But here I figured I would show it for, 
um, for sorting just because, um, you know, it's an interesting idea. And the last thing I'll say, I'll just say two really quick things about the code that we wrote. Um, technically, the sorted function will return, it's technically a class, and it'll return an instance of the sorted class. Um, and so if you really wanted, you could wrap the whole thing inside of a call to the list uh, function or the list class. So you could, you could basically, if you really wanted, write list of, you know, this whole thing. And, you know, that would probably, that would give you a list instead of sorted, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, that's not really the point of uh, the point of this. Um, but the other thing that I'll mention is if you know Python uh, pretty well, you, you may realize that you actually don't need to write the Lambda function. And so I'll really quickly, um, you know, show you this. And if it doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. Um, but if it does, you may find it interesting. So, in, so what I could also do is I could write sorted STRs. And for the key, I could just write str.casefold and no parentheses after casefold. And so now I'm not defining a lambda function. I'm just saying the key is str.casefold. And the reason why this works is because of um, how class methods are, are defined in Python. Basically, all the methods in a class uh, that belong to a class have uh, that self parameter first. And so when you say that the key equals str.casefold, uh, when it calls that function, it'll pass, you know, the current value, which is, you know, one of the strings that's being compared, um, and that'll be passed into the self parameter, which is, you know, the equivalent of calling the casefold function on that particular string, which is what we're doing explicitly in the Lambda version. And so if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry too much about it. Um, but if you do have experience with, you know, object-oriented programming in Python, I do think it's a really interesting uh, feature, and it's something that I'll discuss um, in more detail when I'm talking about object-oriented programming in Python. And so that's all for this video. We've, uh, you know, been able to sort a list in a single statement, um, and we've been able to modify how the elements are compared um, so we can have more control over how that sorting algorithm works. And so this is really useful. Sorted, min, and max come up quite a bit in one-liners. And so being able to have you know, more control over them can sometimes be a huge, uh, a huge improvement, uh, you know, very necessary, just like we saw in this problem. So that's all for this one. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.